Hey guys, welcome to this video where I'm going to be discussing the latest changes to Claude Code. These guys are cooking, I'm telling you. Anthropic pushes changes to Claude Code pretty much every day now, just as much as we would push to our Vibe Coded app. So, I mean, when a big company like that is doing something like this, I feel like they're either A, preparing for something, or B, they're just trying to really be number one at one specific thing, which for us, luckily, is coding right? All of these companies, okay, if you look at it, Grok, bloody, what are they called? OpenAI, Google, they're all trying to be the everything AI, right? Image gen, right? Multimodal, all this different stuff. But it seems to me, and I don't know if people agree with this, but it seems to me Claude slash Anthropic, they're just literally trying to focus on one thing, and that is to be the AI for developers. So if I, honestly, I really believe that if you're not using Claude, you're missing out because Claude code is the number one for this reason, right? Google, they have tons of data. They're really, really good. Nano Banana is amazing, you know, multimodal, all that stuff. OpenAI, same thing. Grok to a lesser extent. I don't actually think Grok's that good. But if we can even just take a step back for a second, I was doing this stuff two years ago, right? And I'll tell you right now, the difference between using any of these except Grok um, compared to what we had two years ago, whether it's Gemini CLI, Codex CLI, Codex in Visual Studio Code, Anti-Gravity, or just Claude Code, these things have changed, right? It's so much easier to code now, I'm telling you. Like, if, if you used any of those older systems, like GPT Pilot, you, you would know what I'm talking about. Okay, so the first change that we're going to look at is prompt suggestions. This is a pretty cool feature that they've got. So this is Harbor. I just rebuilt Harbor. I'm doing an email campaign with Harbor. Before continuing with the video, shout out to today's sponsor, Harbor SEO. Now for full transparency, Harbor was built by me. Originally, it was built by another team. I recently took it back into my own hands and rebuilt it from the ground up with everything that I've learned about coding in the last few years. What Harbor does is it takes your website, just your sitemap, or not even your sitemap, just your site URL, a keyword and it generates incredibly good AI articles using AI. We even have this new feature which basically puts stats inside your articles. This will help you rank on Google and also on ChatGPT and other LLMs because they are looking for data rich articles. It takes all of your images, it does everything guys and it's $29 a month. It has a researcher which basically uses my own systems plus AI in order to find potential keywords for your website. There's the topic scaler which looks for missing parts of your topical authority. There's a reworker which allows you to take previously written articles and make them better. There is a linker which helps you find backlinks. They are already prospected, ready to go, just literally message pe message these people pay them and you'll get a backlink and then finally the latest feature which is the scout the scout what it does is it looks for trending topics in your niche this is optimized specifically for e-commerce it will work on any website but specifically for shopify and wordpress websites check it out there is a link in the description and in the pinned comment thank you for your attention back to the video and I just said, how do I send an email? This is completely and utterly wrong. <laughs> but that's fine. That's not what it, that's not the important thing here. And then it comes up with a suggestion here. You can press tab and it kind of gives you that suggestion and you can add to it, or you can just press enter to send. Now this is just a little feature, but it is still quite an interesting feature that I hope that they develop more. I hope that they input things like, you know, running code and things like that into that. It is useful, but I mean, I haven't used it that much. It's definitely one of the le lesser useful things that I'm going to show you in today's video. This is quite a nice change here. Added wildcard syntax, MCP server, and then wildcard for MCP tool permissions to allow or deny all tools from a server. That's actually really helpful because if you've used MCPs inside Claude Code, it can be quite annoying to have to press enter on every single tool and then uh, put yes and don't ask again on every single tool. Something I talked about briefly, but um, that is definitely worth looking into more is the fact that the auto update now works, at least on my Mac. It was not working before. I haven't updated this, and as far as I know, as far as I know, I should be now on, yeah, I'm on 2.072. I haven't updated anything, so they've actually done that as well, which is super, super nice. Another thing they've done, which I did touch on last time, was plugin market. 
If you do slash plugin, you now have access to their entire plugin market. You can make your own as well, which I'm currently working on just because I think it would make for a good video, make for good content. But basically, as of today, you can just go onto the ones that they have here and just install front end, right? I would highly recommend installing the front end dev, which I already have installed. That's why it's not coming up, but you can see it's right there, front end design. Another one that's super, super useful, guys, is Playwright. Um, the Playwright one just basically means that you have Playwright just natively installed in all of your projects throughout your user. So it doesn't matter if you start a new project tomorrow or whatever, it just has Playwright automatically, which, of course, you could do before. I never actually set it up, but this just makes everything a lot easier. Oh, this is actually a really good change. Fixed MCP service from .mcp.json not loading when using dangerously skip permissions. This was an issue that I had with my um, Claude wizard, which if you haven't used, by the way, guys, this is a completely free generator. It's basically like sub agents um, split into different branches on GitHub. So for example, if you need an app generator, if you need an N810 automator, if you need a service website generator, you know, if you have, if you need SEO pages, this one is particularly good. If you have a Next.js uh, project like a SaaS, you can import this project into Claude and then it will basically generate 50 SEO pages for your SaaS project. A completely free project to use. But yeah, there was an issue where if you got this project, you can see there's a .mcp.json right here uh, and it has Playwright automatically installed. But there was a problem where if you ran dangerously skip permissions directly into this project, the MCP server wouldn't be activated. So that's been fixed as well. Just bug fixing all over the shop, guys. It's really, really nice. There were some bugs yesterday where it wouldn't compact and it would just keep going as well. So they seem to have fixed that too, although I doubt that they've actually alluded to that in these change logs because they don't want to admit that that has happened. Now, the big change, the one that I'm actually, the reason I'm making this video is this one right here. Added Claude code in Chrome uh, beta, or beta, I never know which one to say, feature that works with the Chrome extension to let you control your browser directly from Claude code. Now, the way that this could actually work to your favor, I'm just going to talk about this quickly, right? If you don't know, you can actually send prompts to Claude code by writing Claude, hello, how are you? I think that's how you do it. Let's just see if that's correct. So it should just respond here. Yeah, it's going to respond to hello. I'm not sure how to put the rest of the prompt here. But there is a way to just directly send a prompt right, without being inside Claude code. So what you could do is, in my head, this is the way that I would use this, right? Is you have like every hour, you have like, I'm going to use the word prompt injection, but obviously I don't mean like malicious. I just mean like injecting a prompt uh, from the terminal into Claude. And it could open a new terminal, for example, right? So open new terminal, inject a prompt into Claude that says, open up my Gmail and see if there are any emails that I need to reply to. If there are, then draft a reply, right? Something that simple that could mean that you don't lose a client or keep better in touch with a client or, for example, you know, a sale that is dependent on time will be seen to more quickly and you don't have to pay a virtual assistant. This is where it starts to get interesting, right? I know that there's many, many ways to do it. But I personally would really want the intelligence of Claude Code. You could use Haiku. If you actually use um, Chrome, it, it does actually kind of fall back to Haiku, uh, Haiku 4.5. So it's using a cheap model. It doesn't need an expensive model to be able to do a simple task like this. And then all you do is you can just say like, let's just say open my Gmail and see if there are any emails I need reply to in the last hour if so draft a response okay so one of the main problems with this right now is that you actually have to press allow every single time i'm trying to find a wildcard way to just allow every action but i guess they just don't want people to to do that yet okay this is actually really really interesting it's worked basically everything out i didn't show a lot of that process because th there are people that um you know, might not want their names or full names shared. But yeah, damn, that just managed to do absolutely everything I asked it. So it managed to identify that Grant had sent me a message. It logged into my school community to reply to that message. Now, a lot of you might be saying, why don't you just use Playwright, MCP, you know, this, that, and the other. 
One thing already that I've noticed is if you use the Playwright MCP, you get warned of context every single time. Every single one is like massive, massive amounts of context. Here, it seems to be completely different. And yeah, there's it's not using bags and bags of context. Also, before I talked about injecting prompts into Claude through Terminal, you could actually do something else. I'm guessing you could say something like, Okay, this is great. Set yourself up so you do this every hour on the hour. Um, so use sleep or whatever you prefer. Then spin up a sub agent every hour to check my Gmail to see if there's anything to respond to. Can you do this? So I'm just curious because recently they've used background agents, right? And what it can do is it can actually stay active while it's using a background agent. So I'm curious to see if it's actually possible that we could just leave this running and then every hour it would just activate itself and do whatever task. Okay, so it seems like it did actually do it. So it said it wasn't able to do it, but then I basically just said, um, I've seen you do it by using sleep bash commands and or background sub agents. I won't close Claude. Are you sure it won't work? And then basically said that he would do it. Okay, so that doesn't seem to be working. I just wanted to quickly experiment with that and see if we get it working, but I'm sure there are many, many ways that you can do this. And then this is hopefully a real change, reduce terminal flickering. If they've actually done that, that is huge. That is the biggest change, to be honest with you. I hate the terminal flickering, especially when you have a lot of instances or a lot of sub agents going at once. Guys, I'm going to leave the video there. There's definitely something here with the with Claude Code able to use the browser. It seems to use a lot less context than the Playwright MCP, meaning that potentially you could get entire testing workflows built purely with Claude Code with no MCPs whatsoever. Definitely worth a look. Haiku 4.5 as well is super, super cheap. So you can have a testing agent that used your max plan or your pro plan, and it probably wouldn't use that many tokens. Thank you so much for watching, guys. If you're watching all the way to the end of the video, you're an absolute legend, and I'll see you very, very soon with some more content. Peace out.